What's up guys, Andrew with 911 South here. So today we are gonna wash the car. Um, there's a specific reason for this. I'm getting ready to do a photo shoot uh, coming up that I'm super excited about. Uh, it's gonna be with Larry over at Winning Auto. You can find him at, at Winning Auto. Anyway, so this shoot uh, is gonna be really special. Um, I've done shoots outdoors um, with amazing photographers like Drew over at Cool Collective, stuff I've taken, but this one's gonna be really unique to me in a studio. And so that kind of brings a whole new level or a whole new bar of cleanliness because you are gonna see everything in this space. So car has been washed two days ago, but I wanna make sure that this thing is super clean and ready to go for this. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to uh, take you through my wash technique. Uh, I've gotten a lot of messages, you know, DMs and stuff from people saying, hey, like what's this soap or that sponge or what did you use here? How long does it typically take for you to wash your car? How often do you wash your car? So anyway, I thought I'd make a video with all that in one spot. Not gonna take credit for really the wash technique that I've built. Uh, it's on the back of amazing content creators, uh, all of which you can find here on YouTube. And I would encourage you to go check their stuff out. People like Obsessed Garage, um, Ammo MYC, Pan the Organizer. Um, so really what I've taken is techniques from that, kind of built my own uh, plan that works for me. And that's really what you should do for you. Everyone's got a different setup, kind of different time amount, different car. So this one's specific for what I do. Um, obviously I have a vintage 97, 911 air-cooled Porsche. Um, so I kind of take that into consideration. Um, it usually takes me about 45 minutes to an hour start to finish. That's exterior and interior. And part of the reason is because, um, you know, every six months I do a paint correction uh, where I compound, polish, and wax the car um, all the way back up. By using those products and doing that, it makes washing a lot easier. So uh, if you want, I'll put a link to the video up here in the top. Um, that way you can go check that out, kind of how to paint correct your vintage air-cooled Porsche or really frankly any car. But for the wash piece, what I'm gonna do is take you through some equipment that I use, um, kind of where I got it, and then we'll get going. All right, first things first, guys. Every good wash technique starts with a pressure washer. So this is the Karcher uh, pressure washer. Now, this is something that um, I basically just uh, leveraged the pressure washing guru that is Obsessed Garage and Matt Mormon. Uh, if you know anything about Matt's channel, really he started with pressure washers uh, in terms of kind of his most recent big blow up. I mean, he's been going for a long time, but really pressure washers were his thing. Um, the Karcher is great. Um, now there's much higher end models, Krenzlow's, things like that available. Um, you can certainly check those out, but really bang for the buck. Um, this is a spectacular pressure washer. So uh, Cobra Jet hose, highly recommend you get a legit pressure washer hose. And then we've got uh, Wand, which is important. This one is the Mosmatic gun. The Mosmatic is really very legit, very nice action. Um, wand, extension wand, again, highly recommended to get to those spots. And then of course, nozzle. Um, and that's really the, the wash piece. Um, you know, outside of that, uh, I use a mitt. Uh, this happens to be double-sided to help get bugs off if there are any on the front. And then a two bucket method. So this is the wash uh, bucket here. This is the rinse bucket. You've got uh, grit guards, uh, you know, things like that. And then this is a wheel bucket. Um, probably last thing would be the stool. Very helpful if uh, you're doing wheels and things like that. And uh, if you want to sit on that, just from a cover standpoint, um, I'd recommend that. But yeah, that's pretty much the setup. So it all sits here. Got all the product obviously here. Um, we'll go through some of the things I use on this wash. Some of this is compound and polish. Some of this is all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, stay tuned. Uh, let's get a wash. I'll kind of quickly take you through the steps, but I wanted to spend some time here talking about just the equipment. I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, what should I buy? Should I get a pressure washer, a hose, you know, foam cannon? I guess let's not leave that out. So foam cannon back here, um, you know, really anyone will work. Um, the MTM stuff on Obsessed Garage is also real good. But um, anyway, wanted to take you guys through this and just talk upfront about a lot of the equipment um, and then we'll just get into the wash and, and kind of go from there. All right guys, so the first thing you want to do is wheels. Okay, so what I use is um, Brake Buster. Um, so this product's available at obsessedgarage.com. Um, in addition to these sprayers, which are really handy. Um, and then you're gonna wanna use uh, some kind of mitt. I like this mitt a lot, it fits over the hand. Allows you to kind of scrub the outside flat surfaces and then you definitely want a wheel brush, especially if you have deeper wheels like this uh, roof wheel, which is monoblock. It's got a really deep interior and open spokes, open five spoke design. That way you can really get in the back there and get all that brake dust out. Taking care of wheels is extremely important, especially if you've invested a lot in like a BBS or a roof or you know something super high end because uh, that brake dust will pit the rims pretty significantly uh, and then you got a real problem. So I highly recommend you spend the time on the wheels um, to keep that brake dust off on a regular basis. All right, so we're gonna start by just spraying these down, um, getting them wet and uh, getting anything loose that may be on there off of the uh, wheel. Um, you know, be liberal with this. Definitely wanna get a lot of coating. 
definitely want to get a lot of coverage. Make sure you get inside the wheel. Very important. Calipers, rotors, really the whole thing. This stuff's very safe on your car uh, and really does the trick. Then you're gonna to want to take your mitt and wet that. And then you're just gonna scrub the outside of that wheel real quick. Um, again, flat surface with a mitt, uh, inside with the uh, wheel brush. All right guys, so next thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, you're gonna wanna rinse the car down. So we got the wheels done. Uh, really you just wanna get a spray of water over the whole car. That's gonna loosen off any of that dirt, road grime, whatever. With the pressure washer, the idea here is between the pressure washer, the foam cannon, then your two bucket, the first two steps get off 90% of a properly polished wax and sealed car so that you really avoid scratch and swarm marks. That's the whole name of the game, honestly, is uh, scratching and swirling. And so we're gonna pressure wash it and foam cannon first to try to loosen up as much as possible before we start putting anything with any pressure on the car. You want to notice how I'm working top to bottom. Again, you want to get all the dirt, you know, kind of flowing down. So make sure you start at the top and work your way down. Yeah, one thing I will say that's remarkable is that, uh, you know, between the Jess car polish, the Coal Night Wax, and the bead maker that I use as a drying aid, this car just beads water like nobody's business. So, uh, so when I get to the drying phase, I'll kind of explain how I do that. And there's a real purpose behind all that product and the water beading. Um, a lot of products out there, ceramics and waxes, people are like, oh, it beats water, it looks so cool. Like, there's definitely a practical reason behind it, and I'll show you when we get to that drying phase. Next step is to fill up our buckets. Um, so like I said, you wanna have a rinse bucket, okay, and a wash bucket. Color code these somehow so you know which is which. Um, pick up some of these uh, grit guards or dirt guards. Um, this essentially goes in the water, and uh, when water comes over this, it settles down through these funnels, can't come back up. And then in terms of soap, um, I really like um, Adam's Car Shampoo. Um, this is pH neutral. Um, so if you have any specialty products, waxes, polishes, coatings, whatever, um, this is really the least likely to do anything to that. Um, but it washes really well, it lathers well, it's silky, smooth, whatever you want to call that. It foams well in a cannon. Um, smells like blueberries, I mean that's a bonus, but um, this is really hard to beat. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our hose filler, okay, and uh, we'll fill up the Rinse bucket first. So really for this bucket, you just want enough water so that uh, your mitt can get all the way submerged, get rinsed off, and then you can take that out. You wanna just take your grit guard, put it down in there, press it until it's got a snug fit. You don't wanna press it so hard that it's impossible to get out later. And then on the um, wash side, we're gonna fill this up with just a little bit of water, just enough to get the grit guard down, put a little soap over top, because then we're going to actually use a pressure washer to fill it up to build up some air and some suds. Okay, so now that that's full. Um, last two steps are gonna be to get your Adam soap, okay? And um, you know, you're just gonna wanna put a decent amount in your wash bucket, okay? Um, which will fill up. And then we're gonna take this uh, and go put this in the foam cannon, get that filled up as well. Really, this is what makes or breaks kind of the foaming. What I'd recommend is that you just really be sure to put enough to fill up um, this foam cannon. You know, the suds in this step are honestly one of the most important in terms of not scratching the vehicle. So this is showing about 150, um, or you know, just from a proportion size, I and mean, you can see how tall this is, I mean, it's a thousand total. So call it like one and a half to two parts per 10. And then the other really important trick with this is um, pretty warm, almost hot water. That tends to really help with foaming action. So I'm gonna go fill this up with some hot water. We'll get this all screwed back together, and then uh, we'll get the car pumped out. We're gonna foam the entire car down, uh, top to bottom. I tend to just use everything that's in the bottle, even if I do a couple passes. All right, now what you wanna do is you really wanna let this sit. I know that it's gonna be tempting to just start rubbing all over this thing. Uh, everybody loves good foam, but uh, honestly, let this sit. Let it all drip down. This is like a 10, 15 minute deal typically for this car. Um, you want as much of this to drip off on its own as possible. All right guys, now that the uh, foam has all had a chance to come off the car, the next thing that we're gonna do is use the mitt with that two bucket method.
That may be one of my favorite parts. So again, light passes, um, you wanna start at the top, for sure, work your way down. You know, that's pretty much the golden rule as it uh, relates to anything car washing. That way, any dirt or grime or whatever uh, makes its way down. But more importantly, um, most of your road dirt and grime and all that from driving the car is gonna be on the bottom, you know, closest to the road. And so you really don't wanna do that area and then move to the top and bring all that dirt up and create new scratches. So uh, definitely wanna to go top to bottom. So when our mitt is, is done with that pass, you're gonna take it and you put it in the rinse bucket. Uh, you do not need to push it against a grit guard or anything like that. You just take it, wring it out outside the bucket. Again, we want as much of that dirt to not be in the water. Reload with suds and just repeat that process. All right, so once you're done with that, last step's just gonna be to rinse this all off. Um, you know, take your time here. Make sure you really get all that dirt and soap, all the crevices and all that kind of stuff really off the car before we start drying. Okay, so once you got the car thoroughly rinsed, next step is drying. This is uh, the important part, I think. So like I alluded to before, the waxing, the coating, uh, bead maker, all that's really important because what the idea is, is to use a blower. Um, this one happens to be the uh, Ego Power Plus 530 CFM. Um, this is available like your home improvement store, like a Lowe's Home Depot type of situation. It's about hundred bucks, it's really not a big investment. First of all, it's battery powered, which is awesome. It's actually pretty light, very maneuverable. It allows you to really blow off 95% of this water with this thing, no kidding. Um, Work top to bottom, blow it all down on the ground. Obviously, you don't kick up rocks and stuff, but this is a game changer. It's something I added maybe six months ago. Um, and then we want to leave a little water on there because then we're going to come back with the very last step, which I'll show you. Um, let's get to blowing this thing off. Next thing you're going to need is some type of decently sized microfiber towel. Um, this towel is pretty good size. I think this would be considered like a large. It does the whole car with one towel, which is beautiful. And then this, which is important. So again, this is in a sprayer I got from uh, Team Over Seth's Garage, but inside here is Bead Maker. Um, I will leave a link to every product I've described down below so you guys don't have to hunt. But Bead Maker is in here. Um, it's drying aid. It's a topper, some people want to call it. Basically, when you're done drying, you put this over top. It adds a new layer of hydrophobic um, action. It tends to deepen the look of the paint. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff. It does tend to sometimes take like a half a day to a day to really like show its results. I don't know, it's, it's a little bit of a mystery, um, but it's great product. I highly recommend using this. Um, it smells delicious, bonus points for that. Um, and again, gives it a really nice kind of deep shine and a protectant layer so that your wax and your polish that you spent all that time and effort putting on last longer. So we'll do that over the whole car and use that as a drying aid get all the rest of the water off. And then I'll touch a little bit on interior and then we'll wrap. God, that looks good. You know, I haven't really, um, it's been about six months since I did this paint from a correction standpoint. And I gotta say, it has held up remarkably well with the Jess car and the coal nine. If you haven't checked out my video on that, you really should go look at it. I'm not just saying that to go give views. That's the first time I've actually used that combination on a car. And I am really impressed. I don't know that I will ceramic coat another car based on these results. The way this looks is far superior to a ceramic. Usually people want ceramic over wax and polish because these are clean, but with the bead maker, this honestly is just as easy to clean as my 996 was, that was ceramic coated. And the built-in upside is that every six months, eight months, whatever, you can go in and correct. So if you do get scratches and swirls, they're not in there for the next one to three years. All right guys, so that's a wrap on the exterior. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on the interior because frankly, in my routine of washing the car, I don't spend a ton of time on the interior. Um, if you keep your car clean, you don't eat much crap in there, Bring a bunch of muddy shoes in there, just smart. Honestly, all it takes is a wipe down with interior cleaner. I happen to use Total Interior Cleaner Protector. Griot's makes a nice interior cleaner. I mean, there's a bunch of options. I don't know that one's necessarily that much better than the other. Probably depends a lot on what materials you have inside your car. Obviously, the Alcantara, you wanna use something for that. If you've got leather, use that. If not, so on and so forth. So I use this as a general interior cleaner. Basically come in and wipe everything down from top to bottom. Again, same concept. Um, I do use this little brush. 
a lot. Um, so this allows me to really get inside of like air vents and like little crevices and stuff like that, get all the dust and all that out. And then that's it. Um, I come back with a vacuum, vacuum everything on the floors, call it a day. So I spend maybe five to 10 minutes on the interior um, just by, you know, common sense of keeping the carpet clean inside. All right, guys, that's a wrap. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please uh, hit the like button down below. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to post all those links down below. Be sure to honor the source. It's really important. I wouldn't have my routine if it weren't for what those people have done with their channels. So let's be sure to pay it forward and honor the source. I appreciate uh, you guys watching and stay tuned for the next one.